doing that. And then you keep asking for increases in your credit down the road. Pretty soon, when you're a little bit later in life, and you're ready to buy the house, buy a car, buy whatever you want, they're gonna run a check on you, so you have like a 750 or higher uh, FICO score, and you're gonna get the best rates, you're gonna be able to get that home. Um, and it just will, in countless ways, benefit you in life to be able to have a strong credit report. And credit score, pardon me. For those of you, uh, how many think um, you're spending money unnecessarily on anything? What would you say that is? cable for years because we just streamed everything on, on uh, Netflix or whatever. We didn't have it for years. And then they get you going longer. If you want um, internet that's strong, you know, good yeah, internet connection in there, you, you basically have to have cable. It's like an extra like dollar. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can have all these channels. And we don't like it because we don't like the commercialism involved. And what I like to control what goes in and out of my head. So I didn't want to, I don't want garbage. I don't want my daughter growing up watching garbage on TV. So we were able to stream what came, comes in, but you know, if you want a home phone, you want an internet connection that, that works, you pretty much have to have cable, they, they get you on that. But there's ways, a lot of people cut the cord with cable. It can be done. You don't, it's not a, it's not a need. Hulu is a great way to do that. Uh-huh, sure is. But you also have to pay extra for them to get the Hulu app. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's free. It's I talk about budgeting for a moment. We're talking about creating financial goals. What do you want in life? What do you want 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road? What do you want in retirement time? Okay, I know what I want. I know where I want to be in retirement. I want a place at the beach. I want to retire. I want to be able to, to you know, look at the sunrise every morning. and That's, it. that's where I want to retire. What do I want short, long term? You know, you got to think of short, medium, long term goals. You know, house college tuition, paying back your student loans, mapping all the stuff out, actually putting it down on paper and saying, what do I want 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road? That's how you're gonna get there. And you have to be patient, you have to be disciplined, okay? It means putting a little bit of money away each, each month out of the paycheck, it goes into the 401k, it goes into this, that, and the other, savings account, so in the future you have it. You can't, you know, you can't just kind of go in and then starting now with, with um, with, with your retirement, with anything else, uh, that's gonna benefit you in a, in, a, in a huge way 40 years from now when you're retiring. You're just putting a little away, especially with 401Ks, if you have employers who are offering you a 401K, at least matching, at least, at least putting the minimum up so that they match that amount, or you're just throwing money away, okay? Be honest and precise with what you're, with what you're creating. You know, a lot of people, um, make unrealistic budgets that they can't meet. You have to be realistic now. Um, but what you're going to be earning when you get out of college, how many of you think when you come out of college you're going to be GM of a hotel? I'm glad to see that because you're not. Okay, it's going to take time. Your career is not a, it's not linear. It's not, it's not, uh, I get out and I'm, okay, so now I'm imagining this and your career is going to work its way up. There's no how-to manual, there's no book. That's going to be Jacob's, you know, success. This is how you become a successful GM. Uh, this is your key to a successful life. There's a lot of folks that try to do that. You know, they try to they get people to say, this is, you know, following these steps, you know, will get you to here. Now, what's wrong with that approach? Yeah, well, what else happens? Things change. Things change. Life happens. Life happens, things change. Life is not a straight line. Life goes up and down and up really high and then down really low. And then it goes sideways a lot of times. Life happens and you have to be ready for it and it's not gonna hit your goal when you think you're gonna hit it. And that's okay too. You have a goal in mind. You wanna have a rigid goal and what? And a flexible approach to how you're gonna meet, meet that goal. Because you are gonna hit ups and downs. You're gonna hit times where you're, where you're gonna uh, let's look, uh, anybody here, how many of you have parents in there that worked for a company for 30, 40 years? Which company? 
they had their own company. Okay. Oh, right. They've been doing it for 30 mm-hmm. plus years. Sam, do No, my dad has his own company for like nine years. Okay. My father worked for AT&T, Western Electric, AT&T became Lucent Technologies, 39 years. And then, you know, but those jobs, it seems like those things are not common anymore. You're not going to get in with a company It's going to, you know, you didn't retire to the pension plan and, and money coming in forever. I mean, he, did, he worked hard, he did it right. But that's a different day. Companies don't, companies are not that, uh, you know, they're not that committed to their employees anymore. You have a lot of bad companies out there. They don't care. You know, there's a, there's a few that are have a commitment to their employees and, and FedEx, you know, is, FedEx is great. I've been thinking that for over 30 years. Yeah. We're starting hobbies now and computers. But especially in our industry. You know, we have people, um, uh, a lot of the companies, you have to be with them for 40 years. And you have to really think about your career and how you, you know, how you approach it. I'll give you a good example. I have had nothing more than a than a write up from my previous employers in my past, and I went to work for one company that was um, pretty much a small player. Had a lot of things happen there. Working with uh, working with people who some people who were just I mean not a very good situation. Get in with with one one employee who stole a lot of money. And being in charge of that, next thing you know, I didn't have a job there anymore because of that. Now, could have, could have got upset, could have said, you know, done a lot of things, but when you really look at it and look back, it was probably a great move, but at the time, you know, not so good. But um, people, if they want to get rid of you, they're going to get rid of you. Even if you do the right thing or you don't. But, um, uh, you know, you're going to come across a lot of bad people in this world. You're gonna come across people who, who uh, you know, even good companies, really good companies. Uh, when I look at Hilton, Merritt, a lot of them, that's the companies you wanna be looking for. You wanna be looking for the, these small companies and setting your goals low. You wanna be setting them high. I always use Lenny Subs, for example, and uh, they're probably gonna come back to me one day, really upset, but I don't want you guys focusing on getting jobs at this at this level, you know, and that is a good company. Lenny's great. I love that sub, solid company. But I don't want you guys making, you know, I want you setting your sights high. Disney, Marriott, Hilton, I just, they won't let stuff like that fly, you know? If I was working for, if that was work, what happened at that company, or was it a Hilton, or, they would have, they would have saw right through that small time stuff with some, some employee who, uh, who, was, who was a legitimate low life. They would have seen through stuff like that. But that's just not how it was. So, um, but you look at the companies like the Marriott's, that set your sights high with companies like that. Those are companies that are gonna take care of you, uh, if you if you put in the work for them. Um, so, getting back to this, with regards to budgeting, being honest for such, looking at being with a company where you know that if you're doing the right thing each and every day, that you're gonna have a career with them, all right? You don't want to be jumping from place to place. Get in with a good company out of college. You have the resources through career services, through, um, through the contacts you have here at the university. Get in with a good company. You don't want to work for small time employers like that where you never know what, what's going to happen day to day. You know, you want to work for a company that you can grow with, learn, and, and, and they're financially stable where you're not going to go into work one day and it's boarded up because they can't make their payroll. You don't want to work with companies like that. Um, creating a budget, identifying your goals, we talked about that. Determining what's coming in and what's going out. What are your monthly bills? If you're bringing in $3,000 a month and your rent is $2,000 a month, not good, all right? The upper percentage is out there for what you know your housing cost should be. And those prices will vary uh, depending on which site you go to, but making sure that you have um, that you have uh, you know what's coming in, what's going out, being and being uh, and reducing the waste, making sure that if it, you know you can't be eating out five nights a week and afford to do that, you're gonna have to 
you have to buy some food, cook at home. Go to Costco, get a membership. Buy, you know, yeah, you go in there and you walk out, you never, never spend less than $100 going to Costco. Oh God, That's just buying <laughs> toilet paper and, some, and a couple of things. Everything's $100. But make sure you learn how to cook. And, and most of you in this industry, you know, you're taking cooking classes. You, you can't eat out and go out all the time. It's just not feasible. Determine your income. Gross income, what you make before tax. Net income, after Uncle Sam takes his cut. Okay? Now, they take your cut out of everything. Um, so knowing your gross isn't exactly what, what, you, what, you, um, uh, what you end up with. A real experiment would be if they, if they just gave you your full paycheck without taking any tax out, and then you had to write a check to Uncle Sam out of that, without having to automatically take it out of your check. Then you'd see exactly what we're paying in taxes, Social Security and everything else. And it would create, it would create mayhem in this country because people would finally be able to see what they're, what they're, what they're paying the government. Yeah. You have fixed expenses, and then you have flexible or variable expenses. Fixed expenses don't change. It's there every month. You have your car note. You have your, you have your student loan debt. You have rent, things like that. Those are things that are fixed. You can't change. You have to figure that in right up top. So you take your, your income, your net income of what you're bringing home, your check in hand. Okay, first I take care of all my major expenses that are fixed. Now, some fixed expenses you don't need. Cable, for example. You can save 120, 140, 160, whatever that is, you know, and just get rid of it. You can do that. Cell phones. How many of you switched to like cricket?